here just in time for the knot party. We're not having fun in celebration of not closing. I'll get y'all on Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is this a real thing? Is this really happening? And you, you and I have talked about that. 20s. I'm doing great. Thank you for asking how I'm doing, first person today. Anybody want a drink, a shot? Tell a story. You're making me realize I haven't smelled that smell in a long time. What kind of a party is it if an Australian guy doesn't take his pants off? I've been saying that for years. The best thing is to just get your heart totally smashed and broken a couple times, and then you're good, and then you don't care anymore. What are you doing? Chilling out in the alley, eating beef jerky. I don't trust you. <laughs> So the first film we're going to review is Bloody Nose, Empty Pockets, um, currently out of Curzon, but it came highly recommended by Mark um, on our last episode. So Mark, tell us a little bit about the film and uh, we'll, we'll chat about it. Sure thing. So I will begin with a synopsis as the film play, as you know, the film plays, and then I'll go into the circumstances of production because I feel like it's a, it's a necessity for this film. So the ostensible subject of Bloody Nose Empty Pockets is a bar in Las Vegas called the Roaring Twenties, which is closing. It's its final day of trading. And so all of the regulars convene to their normal spaces in the bar over the course of the morning when it opens, the afternoon, and it rolls into the evening, rolls into morning again. And there's this fantastic kind of twilight vibe to it that the space that they hold sacred is being taken away from them for commercial interests. Uh, Las Vegas constantly changing. It doesn't seem to have any fixed identity, whatever. Um, so this is one of the casualties of you know city development in a way. And so the film has a lot of very um, entertaining on one side and then very sad moments on others uh, where the kind of bar regulars are caught in a kind of verite style where the camera sort of just sweeps to them for a second and then bounces away sometimes it stays longer if there's a sort of emotional import to the situation that's being caught there are blindingly funny non sequiturs and single lines that we'll maybe get into when we yeah uh, you know when more people start speaking about it here but i'll say that the circumstances of production change this entirely because it's not filmed in las vegas it's filmed in new orleans in a bar in new orleans and all of the bar regulars are New Orleans bar regulars who have been sort of assigned positions in the film by the directors. They met the directors, got to know them, and then were sort of given, quote, roles in the film, even though the, what's fascinating to me, at least texturally in the film, is how it mixes on one hand great aleatory, spontaneous moments, possibly sauce-induced moments, um, but also seems to have this pre-preparedness, also has this kind of plan design. And this is kind of, you're kind of clued into this as a viewer very early on when the big Australian bloke comes in and hands a brown package to the, the barman and says, would you mind watching this for me? And the barman says, do I want to know what's in here? And the Australian says, nope. <laughs> and so that's set as a, as a fictional device sort of nested right in the, right in the beginning of the film. And, yeah, so that then changes the, the texture of the film because you realize that these are, there's, there's a lot of truth to it. It feels truthful. The emotions feel real, but it's make believe in a way. It's pretend. The, maybe the people became friends while they were filming, but they weren't friends beforehand. And there are moments where people who are supposedly drunk are keeping to a script in a way because there's one, one gentleman who has this line about, Nevada and he's reading from these cards and he's meant to be heavily inebriated and yet he's keeping to the script and he's not accidentally saying oh we're actually in New Orleans so there's I think a very clever um, construction in the editing as well. And um, you obviously love it uh, uh, what does everybody else um, think of this film in general? Yeah I mean this this is exactly the kind of documentary I love I actually didn't do any reading on this film beforehand and so that's completely new information to me that, that <laughs> there is a construction behind it so that's actually really really interesting to learn Um, I myself spent many years working in bars my boyfriend still is a is a bar manager um, and I just saw so many of the bar flies that he has at his bar in this film like it was so 
uh, so many characters that were kind of recognizable. Obviously, I'm talking about people in, in Edinburgh, Scotland, but you know, the sorts of um, folks that kind of gravitate to these spaces, there is a lot of similarities the world over, it seems. Um, and uh, I, I think the way that it was filmed was kind of perfect for what it was. It was very rough and ready. It was like they weren't a lot, they weren't too afraid about us kind of seeing the cameramen. There's like a mirror behind the bar, right? So you occasionally catch the the uh the director or, or I don't know if it was self-shot. Um and uh they don't hide away from that. They kind of they zoom in on the on the um folk in the bar and it kind of it gets a little bit grainy and it's not necessarily the best footage, but it kind of works for this like slightly seedy, slightly sleazy Las Vegas. Um, and the Australian character that you mentioned, like, I just, he had me in, in like belly aching laughter throughout the film. <laughs> um, yeah, he was, he was incredible. And then it's also, it's quite sad and it, it hits on some like really key issues. It's got, you know, a lot of disillusioned characters. There's sort of this generation war thing going on between some of the characters, these, uh, older guys trying to give wisdom to the younger guys and the younger guys are throwing it back in their face and sort of saying well you know you've ruined the earth and like this is what we're kind of left with um and and ultimately the ending as well I felt it it really again speaking as someone who's like worked in a bar and you've got these people that you know you give so much time and so much energy to every day you chat to them you know their life stories but ultimately when it gets to closing time you just want to close and you want to go home and you want to get into bed and you kind of feel that at the end where there's I think the the balance between the people who uh, run the bar and their feeling towards the loss of the space versus the people who you know this is the space they go to every day it's their home you kind of get that in that final moment between um the gentleman that that well appears to sort of live there maybe um and uh, the woman who just wants to close up shop and go home because her son's sleeping in the back of her car. Um, so yeah, it, it's 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 so warm, but it's also so uh, so sad. I think in many ways. Yeah, I mean, I, I think totally. Like, I agree with that. I find it quite. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. It has it has its moments of humor and so forth. But I find it quite. I find it quite sad. Um, it's also it it, it kind of nudges and winks at the um the fact that it's a bit screwy because it, it opens with the um you know the words from the declaration of independence we hold these truths to be self-evident you know which is quite you know which is a quite a interesting way to open it up I, it makes and i think like we discussed this off air when we were doing i think it was the last show i forget but when we were looking at Il Mio corpo which is another kind of hybrid documentary which i think had we not known that going in, or at least certainly, I mean, speaking for myself, I would have assumed it wasn't a documentary. This one, however, despite all the kind of like fabricated elements of it, I would have, it's, it's kind of the flip side of that coin. I would never have get, to me, I'd, I'd, you know, unless you were like really paying ridiculously close attention, I don't think I would have really realized that. And I think this is, you come back to that discussion we had the last time about what exactly is it trying to do? Like what truths is it trying to capture? What is it? And and for my money, I think Bloody Nose Empty Pockets does that a lot better than that one did. And I was really very impressed with it. Even down to the little things that they choose to focus on in and around the bar, you know, they all stop and focus on, you know a jeopardy question about native americans it will give uh, a little bit of room for like there's a guy at the, the bar who and I, I actually must admit there was one scene that hit rather differently watching it after the events at the the capitol um last week was when sort of like the guy at the bar basically starts talking about trump and says they're going to impeach him you know and it's just like you know obviously you've got all that um staged factor but it's just it seems to have this weird prescience about it it seems to be like almost kind of like capturing the the mood of med like then distilling it down for want of a no pun intended um distilling it down into this this bar environment so any of the staged elements which you know i wouldn't have picked up on if i didn't know about them and clearly like, as carissa said like she she didn't know that going into it, it clearly 
clearly is the case. I was pretty impressed with it. I thought it captured, I, I thought it really captured something both sad, but also amusing and just, you know, I was really pretty impressed with it. Um, I mean, I have to say this, like, once I watched it, I was like, that is a Mark film and like, <laughs> definitely one of your favorites. Like, I was, why. it did feel a lot like a bar version of The Task at points, <laughs> well, I think. I, yeah. I, <laughs> I kept thinking yeah. of The Task, but then I kept thinking about how much more I appreciated this one versus The Task, you know? Fair, um, fair. But it, yeah, but in terms of like, a construction that is also feeling in somewhat organic, an organic experience or something or or true to life. And I think that also goes back to the the, the things that Carice was saying. I've spent, I, you know, I spent a lot of time working in restaurants and bars, but I also spent a lot of time in bars like that, you know, of like, especially in New York and dive bars or whatnot. And, um, and there's just like, there's a community and a like a timeline that goes forward. Like the longer you spend in an evening in a certain place or the more you get comfortable with that and how, how important, I'm just very nostalgic for like American bars pre COVID, you know, because it's like this, I just kept thinking, gosh, you know, like you can't do that right now. Or, you know, it's not the same. And um, it's, it, it did, I think I, you know, I read your article before, so it, it did, I wouldn't have probably ca caught those things that you mentioned of it being fabricated, but as I watched it, I did see things like, I just felt it was staged, you know, there were elements mm -hmm. like what that wouldn't be on the TV unless it was a hipster bar and like, you know, East Village or something like that. Like we're not putting an archive, you know, film on the TV or, or whatnot. And obviously the way this stuff was shot and similarly to the fact I felt with Il Mio Corpo, it definitely was so pretty. But I'll have to say like everything about that film staged or not, I think we, we could have done a similar documentary unstaged of a local bar in a place like Vegas or New Orleans and had a fairly similar kind of, you know, experience of that hangout movie. Um, I think the look of it, I was saying when we talked about clemency, you know, like of making a very ugly kind of place or a place that you would go by on the side of the road and not feel like, you know, it's is gorgeous. And the, the feeling of that film is so beautiful. I probably will be inspired by it for many years. I kind of think of like certain, you know, photographers like William Klein and, or, you know, and, and the stuff that he did. And, and there's this energy and of the way that this film was shot that really resonated with me. And I think I'll probably be going back to that film more than a lot of films we've seen or I've seen. So I'm, I'm really, really happy you brought this to our, our attention and I'm, I'm glad that we saw it, so. Oh, I'm, I'm I'm very glad too. This this went over far far easier than I thought it was going to. Um, <laughs> the, the the great thing that I think everyone has mentioned is that although there's an element of staging, and I was kind of I was thinking when I was writing that piece about the film whether to mention that in a way because does it constitute a changing of the experience? But if it constituted a change in the experience in a sort of profound sense, then clearly that would have been mentioned in the film at some point. There would have been. A moment where you realize that you know they are filming you know they're all they're all kind of in on the in on the task in a way not to use a pun but they're they're kind of you'd see a moment where the preparedness was revealed and since it's not it's perfectly legitimate to watch this film and then not read anything about it afterwards and think oh yeah you know a good a very good doc because it captures the feeling of losing a specific a, you know significant place in your life so I think generously and so specifically that it, it doesn't need that information. I thought the information was significant and I thought it like changes the experience and um, you begin to realize certain parts of it are more contained and I think stronger than if they had been, um, you know, just caught on the fly. I think for instance, um, the person who Carice mentioned, Michael, who's the sort of the first person in in the morning and the last person to leave almost 24 hours later. Um, he he is really important for this. And I think in as much as it is marshaled around any one presence, any one either character or social actor, depending on how you want to view um, his position, it's sort of marshaled around him in a way. Um, and the first time I watched that, I was a little bit frustrated by this because I thought that's such a self-conscious performance that he's giving. 
that he kind of begins the day in great spirits, meeting old friends who are coming back to the bar for the first time in ages. And uh, you can see there's a kind of buoyancy in his presence. Then he gets quite dejected and his kind of swings of mood match the film's swings of mood so closely in a really important way because it seems like time kind of just stops moving for him at a certain point, it seems to dilate for him at a certain point. And he kind of just spends a lot of time on the couch observing in a, in a, you know, in a hump, reading Eugene O'Neill. And um, he has this kind of heart to heart moment with a guy who has um, eyeballs tattooed on his eyelids, uh, where he says like, the earliest moment you can get out, stop coming to these places. And he, like, these are, if it's not a true story, it is true in a wider sense. Um, and something specifically about this too is because there's very artfully inter, uh, sort of interspliced um, location footage of Las Vegas, which you know is very convincing. Like the first time you, the first time I was watching this, I was like, okay, yeah, look okay, at Las Vegas film. Um, but on second thought, on second watch, I should say, the the aspect of this is like an amazing movie about Vegas becomes clearer because what's the best way to make a Vegas movie but to fake it? You know, like that's, that seems, that seems um, so significant to my experience of the film and I think to all of our experiences of it. Yeah, I, um, the, 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 I think something else the film benefits from, from like having the presentation it does despite staged elements is there are certain things that it captures like when there's conversations going on where I think if you were to try and do it in a, 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 like, a like a very obviously narrative film, it would be way too on the nose. It wouldn't ring true. Um, you know, and I'm thinking about bits so when they're discussing about like generations ruining the earth. And then there's another bit where they get into an altercation. Like, you, you know, it's like the younger folk in the bar is in like, you know, shut up yourself involved little punk and stuff like that. And there's, it's very, it's very obvious what the dynamics are. But I think if you were to put that in a narrative film, I don't think it, it, it would seem, it would seem too convenient and too on the nose. I think with this presentation style, it works. And I think maybe the reason that I've reacted better to this than Il Mio Corporal, which don't be wrong, is a film I enjoyed fine, but it's more, I think when you have this element of the hybrid thing, the thing that people worry about, I mean, certainly I do, and I think this is what people generally worry about, is whether in some way it's being dishonest, right? Now, in the case of Il Mio Corporal, I think you could have that argument. And I think someone that you could have that argument about whether it's not being fully truthful. I don't think you can have that with this. Um, sure, there's staged elements, but I don't think you could l accuse it of lacking honesty, to, despite that presentation for me. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess you could make a nonfiction film. It, again, like it kind of just reminds me of Dazed and Confused as well, and this kind of hangout sort of feeling of a film. Also, I just and back to our love of you know, these fly on the wall kind of films like Frederick Weissman, you know, it's, it's just very much about a, a like a public space and a community and, and, you know, the, the intricacies of that kind of stuff. But as you said, it's very sad. And I, I suppose maybe there's so many sad things going on right now that this was kind of a nostalgic and like, I, I know there's terrible problems and people should stay away, but you know, there's, there's very much of like any, any bar America, you know, that, that, um, that, you know that there's a community there and there's something really valuable to that to that um to to that experience so really yeah a really interesting film um um you know uh, i i'm i'm keen to continue to look back at it and think more about it and you can see it on curzon um right now so check it out let us know what you think mm -hmm.